Good morning. Good morning. Happy post Thanksgiving. It's the Monday blues after a long holiday weekend, right? It, yes. And I was just informed this morning um, via my daughter that we have four Sundays until Christmas. Okay. Is that four Mondays too then? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Four weekends to shop <laughs> until Christmas. Well, we kicked off the holidays, got our tree up. We started watching Christmas movies last weekend, but um, again, this weekend, tons of fun stuff. There's a lot of new ones out that were already, Campbell is quoting like crazy. We're, yeah, running around the house singing and there's a lot of musicals. Oh my gosh, musical we, movies. Uh, we watched Spirited over the weekend. You did? That's what, that's oh cool. my goodness gracious. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> what an allegory. I loved it. It was great. I'm going to watch it again and again and again and again. That's so funny. That's what we've been singing all weekend, <laughs> but probably different songs. <laughs> well, today we're going to talk about. Um, a couple of five lessons learned from the movie Christmas Vacation. This is a classic. We have not watched it yet this year, but we certainly will. But um, good old Chevy Chase Christmas Vacation is a classic. And we've been talking the last couple of weeks about <laughs> turning this into a podcast. And here we are. Um, we're going to take a couple left turns, I think, but there's some fun things that we can wrap into the movie. So, um, let's dig into it. Number one, frostbite's a real thing, right? Audrey learned this when they went to find the giant Christmas tree out in the middle of the woods. Out in the middle of nowhere where it was snowing and they were going to cut down the Griswold family Christmas tree. That's right. <laughs> and she couldn't, uh, she couldn't talk. She was so right. cold. And... <laughs> so frostbite's a real thing. I've got a couple of tips here, which I actually didn't know about frostbite. Um, so there's, you know, obviously different stages of it, but frost nip, I did not know was a real thing. Mm -hmm. I've heard that word. I just thought it was, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's a real thing. So I have a feeling I've definitely experienced this, right? Mm -hmm. Where when you warm your hands back up, it's, tingly and hurts mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, have definitely experienced frost nip, but then you get into the real deal with frostbite and deep frostbite and mm -hmm. losing extremities and oh my yeah blisters after twelve to thirty six hours of rewarming the skin. Uh, pretty gross, but you know this actually reminds me of I think it had to have been three or four years ago. Uh, this guy did an amazing, uh, like social media documentary on, he was crossing, like he was going to the North pole. So him, like him and a buddy solo on, uh, like no help. What's mm -hmm. that called? Um, I don't know. They didn't get any extra, like external help mm -hmm. unassisted. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so they were crossing Antarctica. Right? Is that the North Pole? I don't know. Either way, <laughs> it was an amazing journey and it was very inspiring to watch this guy. But the whole time, you know, he's like in his tent and like his nose is all deformed because it's so cold. Wow. And I mean, mm -hmm. it was really amazing. I, I want to go back and look, watch, see what he's doing now. But um, anyways, frostbite, okay. Audrey, number one, frostbite's a real thing. Right. Number two is the turkey. The turkey. Can we go back to the frostbite for a yeah. second? Let's go back to frostbite and circulation because there's some of the, those things that I wasn't, I was like, okay, so the frost nip is you do feel pain and tingling and you do, but there's no permanent skin damage. Yes. And then the more superficial you get, um, superficial frostbite causes changes in skin color. 
right? Yes. Okay. And then you get this deep severe, but I want to go back to, um, just kind of wrap this in health wise, because some people out there, um, if you're anything like me, I, I have Raynaud syndrome. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you know anything about that, but your skin actually will, um, you know, when there's a certain amount of humidity and the, and the temperature goes just right below where it needs to in levels of freezing, um, my skin will actually start to turn color and, um, it'll get white and purple and things like that. My extremities will mm-hmm. actually be numb, tingle, or even be a little bit painful too. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's also it's circulation. So it's so important as far as giving health tips, um, it's really important to make sure that you're taking care of yourself through the winter months. And if you do experience circulatory issues, there's a lot of things that we have to offer, you know, here as far as um, phytotherapy and herbs are concerned. So I just wanted to let you know for all of you guys who your fingers kind of go numb and so your feet, I, I get it. You don't have frostbite. It's, it's rain knots. Okay. Yes. <laughs> it turns white, right? Like, uh... White. Yeah. They turn white, per- discoloration, white, purple, but yeah. I'll be in gloves and everything and still mm-hmm. just... Are they also cool? Oh, my hands cool. are freezing. Yeah, you're, most people who have Raynaud's, their extremities are cold. Just all the time? Mm-hmm. Okay. Number two is the turkey, right? They cut into that beautiful looking turkey and it's nothing but... That's too overdone. It evaporated, right? Uh, yes. Okay. So we learned a lot about turkey because we just followed up from Thanksgiving here. But um, I, it was very interesting to learn about where to uh, put a thermometer to find out if the oh, turkey's actually done or not. Wow. Really? I don't know if I know this. Yeah. Oh. So. Uh, you want in the thigh of the turkey, mm. you want it to be 180. Okay. In the breast, 170. Okay. And if you just stick it right in the stuffing, it needs to be 165. And that's how you know your turkey's done. That's amazing. I think too many people overcook a turkey mm-hmm. than undercook a turkey, mm-hmm. which uh, doesn't leave anyone happy because mm-hmm. dry turkey is the worst. It's the worst. You have to drown it in gravy and. Anything else on the plate? Mm-hmm. This also brings up some of what we talked about last week, which is what to do with the bones if all you have is dried out turkey. Oh, yes. Keep those guys. That's right. Right? Yeah. You have to soak them, make some bone broth out of that. Absolutely, bone broth. Right. So, a couple of hours on the stove, I think it was like four to six hours mm-hmm. on the stove. Yes. Or mm-hmm. in that um, maybe two in an Instapot. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. And yeah. most of it's going to be just stuff that you already have around the kitchen from the rest of the cooking. If you have carrots. You probably have some onions and some celery from the Miracle you made for your stuffing. So that's already garlic. there, which is great. There's garlic. Yes. So good. Yes. Some thyme and Ugh, rosemary, even. Oh, rosemary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So use that dried up turkey and make bone broth. Uh, number three, eggnog. <laughs> so when we were, uh, well, we went to the store. So I was, I was just telling Dr. Endel that we totally missed the mark. I did not know in Medina, Ohio, that there is this huge museum that's dedicated to strictly Christmas. So what they've done is they've collect all the movie set studio, um, on studio, Props, which I mean, and, and we're talking from little ones to big ones, but one of the ones that was there in the window was Clark's. Like, he's got this moose cup and, yes. and he's like with these moose ears coming out of this eggnog cup. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's perfect. Anyway, that makes they me sell laugh. Those anywhere. That they do, selling. they they do. So they were they they, they were selling they were selling the replica, you yeah. know, a replica of it. But I got to see it at least like in the I was like, mm. okay. they were like, that's really the that's the cup he drank out of. Absolutely. How yeah. cool is and, that? And you know, knocks them over all the time. And <laughs> What was there? So it was like another little thing that kept getting knocked over in that movie all around the eggnog. It was hilarious. But all, you know, that's his uh, release is putting on Christmas lights and drinking eggnog. Yes. So I, I, I've had 
good eggnog. I had, I had no idea how to make it. So I looked up a recipe on like how to make a healthier version of it. Yes. And so this is on my list this year. Make some, some make some healthy eggnog. Yes. We'll see how, yeah. mine's going to have to be cold. I don't think I can do warm eggnog. Mm-hmm. Um, your warm eggnog. Uh, no, I've never had it warm. Okay. But that sounds good to me. So I'm terrified though to try like the eggnog latte from. Oh, now now you're changing my mind. So yeah. first of all, we discontinued that. I'm so sorry. There's Everybody a out there who I'm is sure. warning that I'm sure there's a reason. it was excellent. But now I have had to actually make my own eggnog latte. Um, and I'll let you know how I do that because I actually I do it vegan. I do it egg free too. So and and I cheat because there's an amazing product out there by Calafia Farms. Calafia, I think is how you say it, and it's holiday. Eggnog, so it's it's really lovely, but it's lovely for an eggnog latte if you're going for a healthier version of this. I disagree. Can you have <laughs> eggnog without eggs? You can do that. I mean, <laughs> at that point, it's not eggnog. Too many of our patients are allergic to eggs, Doctor Endel. You have to give them some type of. Oh yeah. my gosh! <laughs> That's so funny. <sighs> All right. Okay, but. Yes, I can't. I can't eat uh, eggs. Yes, yes. All right. Share this. So I didn't know what was in eggnog, but this is a healthy version. This is from uh, Ben Greenfield. Okay. I don't know if you've heard of him. He has all kinds of content out there. But um, so you've got two raw pastured eggs, which my beautiful little chicks are going to supply for me. (laughs) We've got a bunch of eggs right now. Um, Eight to 12 ounces of coconut milk. A dash of nutmeg and vanilla, some raw honey, monk fruit, or stevia to taste. Mm-hmm. You just whip it in a blender. Mm. It sounds pretty easy to do. I thought it was going to be a lot more complicated and right. longer of a process. Now, he does not include alcohol in his. Right. Um, so somebody had commented in the comments of his post on their version of it, and I kind of like his version better. <laughs> Not as healthy. So in this other version, there's four eggs, some sugar, bourbon, uh, full fat milk, double cream, cinnamon, nutmeg, and a pinch of ginger. That sounds pretty good too. Maybe substitute the sugar. Full fat milk is not horrible unless you have dairy allergy. Mm-hmm. But I, I might maybe combine these two. Use the coconut milk, mm-hmm. some, home, some, some eggs from the backyard. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll see what we get. But you know, yours is gonna have coffee. Mine is gonna have mine espresso. may have something else yeah. in it. <laughs> mine will definitely have espresso in it. But we could do, you know, eggnog in the morning. Well, and non-eggnog in the morning. Okay. Eggnog at night. That'd be okay. Liberty talks in between. That's right. That's right. <laughs> only one, only one day a year. Mm-hmm. Okay, number three is about the oils. I was trying to remember this scene. I do need to go back and watch it because I cannot remember Okay, this. so okay. first of all, he works at a cereal manufacturing company. Okay. And uh, he just came out with, he's expecting a bonus because he came out with a, That's... something to coat the cereal. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then he goes sledding and he uses this special product to coat the bottom of his sledding saucer. Oh my goodness. And then... You know, there's a scene where he's bouncing through the parking lot and over the street and right. knocking people over. So the oils, bad oils should not go on your food no, or on your saucer, your or, saucer. or on your body or on your body. Mm-hmm. So talk to us about bad oils. Okay. So you're really talking about hydrogenated oils, which yes. has been a huge thing, which has been actually made illegal in a couple of different states. Now, um, hydrogenated oil does add um, partial hydrogen bond, which has been deeply researched to cause plaque buildup 
in the body. So it's really important to read and to also understand that now you've got, you know, uh, 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 we've caught on to understanding hydrogenated oils versus non-hydrogenated oils. So understanding that there's certain incognitos that are out there. Um, canola oil is a hydrogenated oil. You may not know that, but it is. Um, so that, you know, less commonly known, if you see something and it says rapeseed oil, rapeseed is a hydrogenated oil also. So now they're doing this AKA, they know that we've caught on. So, so now they're just, the FDA is listing, you know, the ingredients as, um, rapeseed or canola or something like vegetable. that. Vegetable oil is another one. Vegetable oil sounds healthy. It sounds healthy. Palm oil sounds healthy. Things like that sound healthy. So it's really important. So, um, I, I find that if you're, um, using, um, things from food sources like olive oil or almond oil, or oil or avocado, oil and you're reading the ingredients and you notice that there's nothing else on there you're you're in pretty good yeah you're pretty good there shape um i we used to offer we still could a test to look at your because the big thing that oils do is it produces um omega-6 fatty acids or it's comprised of omega-6 fatty acids mm -hmm. um which is extremely inflammatory in your body that's right. um, and so arterial wise that's how that, that build up it causes inflammation which actually is uh, what your body's trying to repair is with the buildup um, but there's a test a blood test a finger prick test that you we we can do that measures your omega-3 to omega-6 ratios mm -hmm. and depending on how off balance those are, um, you can start supplementing with either higher doses of omega-3s. Right. Number one would be reducing the, the uh, amount of omega-6 six six that you're yes. taking in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So pretty cool. Uh, um, I got turned on to that from a um, nutritional neurology course out in Seattle. Mm. Um, Dan Murphy is um, amazing to listen to. But That's right. And, and, you know, it goes back to like, um, it, the good fats are important, right? Not all fats should be demonized because when you're going back to neurology, you've got to understand that the integrity of the cell is constituated with saturated fats, healthy saturated fats. It's what gives your cells integrity as a matter of fact, and especially brain cells integrity. So it's super important to have this ratio balanced. Oh, I'll never forget this patient came in. And uh, he was talking about how great his cholesterol was and how low it was. And uh, it was very, very low. I said, well, how low is your cardiologist trying to get for your doctor, whoever was prescribing these meds because he was so excited. He's like, he says as low as possible. Mm. And I'm thinking that's not mm -hmm. totally, mm -mm. there's good there's a reason that your body has cholesterol yes, and there's fats a, and like yes, there's your a, nerves need that. They it's, do. It's, that's the myelin sheath around that's right. the nervous system that's, is it's healthy cholesterol. cholesterol. Exactly. And it's important to understand that if you have an upregulation of cholesterol, you need to go back and figure out what is happening in my body right now to upregulate that. And cholesterol is a band-aid in the body, right? So anytime we have an upregulation of it or it gets to be a little bit high, you have to understand there's another organ system under duress that needs support. So mm -hmm. actually allowing your body to speak to you in that manner and trying to dig a little deeper to figure out okay, what's underneath that high cholesterol? I don't just want to, you know, suppress it and, and then ignore what else is taking place, but I, I actually need to understand what's happening. Yeah. And that's interesting. When I did keto for, did keto very strictly for at least six months and it jacked my cholesterol. Mm -hmm. um, I was, um, and I was like doing the, testing in the morning, mm -hmm. like blood test, make sure I was in ketosis. I think, I just don't think my body does not do well with, uh, like dairy and fats right. and, and all right. that. Well, some fats, like healthy fats. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it, it was, that's why for some people, I think keto is amazing. Right. It helps them tremendously, but 
there is not one a one size fits all for her. It's true. So it's so true because we talk about this also. The liver plays and the gallbladder plays such an important part in emulsifying and metabolizing the fat that we're eating um, from our diet, which is super important to be cognizant about because like your liver is also responsible for detoxifying your system. So you've got environmental stressors, you know, that we're breathing in, you know, things like that. And um, to understand that not all of us, if, if we're not, if, if we are in constant need of supporting our liver or we don't have a gallbladder, that sometimes keto, what it does is it, it it's going to be completely consumed your liver with trying to mobilize and emulsify the fat from your diet. So what it's not doing is it's not mobilizing hormones or, or toxins or, you know, all those other Glucose, things. Glucose. Right. Exactly. Things like that. So yeah, it's super important just to know, you know, everything is not a one size fits all. It doesn't matter who you are and your state of being. Yes. All right. Number four. Do you remember this part saying grace? So the, uh, the crazy, <laughs> I do. There's a grandmother, poor yeah, grandma, yeah. right? She's she's got dementia. She can't hear. Yeah, she's. You know, she brings her cat. She brings her cat in the box, <laughs> which brings up our bonus point at the end of this. But uh, they told her to say grace, and she starts singing the, the national, the national, the national, the national, the national anthem. anthem. Yes. Oh my goodness, grace! So number four, saying grace and giving gratitude can look very different for everyone. Mm. So have a little grace. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, you know, don't forget to include that in your uh, Christmas festivities, right? Yes. So, uh, also gratitude. So, one of my favorite parts of the movie is uh, Clark stuck in the attic upstairs watching old reels from he watches his childhood. childhood. Yes. Dressed up with the, you know, all the gloves and everything. Yes. Oh my goodness. That's uh, uh, that's me. Yeah, right there. I love it. He's crying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Every time I'm like, brings a little, this brings a little tear. Oh, my goodness. And then he falls through the ceiling. That's great. Uh, number five, wrapping it up here. Don't be afraid to set your standards high, but have some flexibility to adapt. So, go to Clark. Ambitious, gets the giant Christmas tree doesn't fit in the house, he cuts it up and then he has to take it back outside and cut it. You've got um, the lights on the house, he goes over the top. Uh, You've got him buying the pool, which <laughs> Campbell says, what was that one movie where he, there's the, um, the inappropriate scene of the, <laughs> there it is. the pool. I'm like, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, he also, is you know helping cousin Eddie Try produce the Christmas. Christmas for his kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eddie pulls out the list already made the size of yes. it. <laughs> After driving his clunky RV into the driveway. That's right. So don't be afraid to set your standards high, like Clark does throughout the entire movie. Um, and then you know have a plan B to you know still be able to enjoy the holidays if it's if it's not really going your way. So we ran into this last night, right? It's, you're trying to put up the Christmas tree and kids just want to bicker and, you know, it's, but they did, they did a great job actually. So, um, so that's it. We've got a bonus bullet point here with involving cats. Do you remember the cat? I, I remember. Getting into the tree I, and. Oh my goodness. Yes. And you, that's a you've real had thing. cats that have I've had done cats. That, right? I have had cats. I have had cats. I've had a, a crazy cat take down my tree altogether. He would just go flying from the, wherever he could down to the top of the tree, <laughs> knocking it over. Sounds and you've got to be careful, right? Because they chew on wires. Like this is this is like a real thing. Like that they're gonna bat off all of your ornaments because those look shiny and fun and they swing. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, there you go. Boneless. Watch your cats around the tree, which if you have cats, you already know what they're going to get into. Yeah. All right, that's it. A little shorter today, but five lessons learned from 
Christmas vacation movie. Starting out the, kicking off the holiday season here. Kicking it off. All right, everyone. We'll see you next week. Have a great week.